G'day guys, Josh here. Now this is basically a different part with tier 1. Now, I'm not sure if it's a tier 1 trilogy, I suppose, but let's just talk about tier 1 mats overall. So the tier 1 mats that you really want to get is you want to get tier 1 mats that, you know, do your Harmony Leap Stones and also Guardian Stone Fragments and Destruction Stone Fragments if you're in tier 1. And we're going to discuss, like, how you get some of those mats as well. Now, overall, um, first of all, you can get some of the materials from... Obviously, Chaos Dungeons and Guardian Raids as well. You can also get it from the uh, vendors from, like, you know, if you do Chaos Dungeons after the Aura Residence has drawn off as a weekly roster. Let's just talk about another way to get the Honing Mats as well. Now, another Honing Mats is called the Speedrunner Tier 3, which I'm just using a guide from Max Roll. Max Roll is, you know, big, notable site. I'm not even sponsored by them at all, but it's a notable site of, uh, you can basically get a lot of information from it as well. So if you get stuck on anything with this video and stuff like that, you can go straight to Max Roll. And it probably has what you need, basically, as well. Now, let's go to speed run to tier 3. So, speed run to tier 3. Generally, this, like, strategy is for, um, like, top tier players that know what they're doing and stuff like that as well. But you can do it too, but you don't have to strictly follow the guide. Like, this one is what they're trying to do here. Is that they're trying to just get to tier 1 and tier 2 by getting to Rondell, Dun Count Dungeons right away. But for us, we're not going to be focusing too much on that. We're going to be focusing on like just getting materials basically for our dude so let's just go through here so basically before you start the, the you know walk through make sure you've done all of this okay make sure you've done all of these areas there's also a post level 50 guard as well that we also go through as well after this now with the ocean liner as well the ocean liner is something you get when you do hit level 50 in north fern that you can just basically sail across the seven seas and also as well you can make sure you do this so the speed run here generally has like a lot of islands that you want to go to. Like for example, Serenity Isle, Toto Silver, Freedom Isle, Black Fangs Den, Lullaby Island, um, Astella, Starlight Island, Panda Island, Pato, uh, Dream Girl Island as well. Um, as you can see here, basically you get a lot of emotes and you get a lot of you know stuff that you need for tier 1 content. Also from doing some of these quests as well, you get the mats. Like... Guardian Fragments, Destruction Fragments, and stuff like that as well. Then you got Dream Girl Island as well. Dream Girl Island, you get a lot of mats from there as well. So a lot of these speed run to tier 3, these islands give you a lot of mats. I don't know how exactly how much mats, but if you just work through all the islands here, like if you work, if you work through the islands here bit by bit, you can get most and a lot of like items like Harmony Leap Stones especially as well. Get some great Una quests, like for example, Cow Hurts. If you finish Cow Hurts, you get the next Una quest, which is to uh, free people in jail again with the pirate coins. And you can see here that, you know, you get the most Harmony Leap Stones from here as well. We're not going to talk about Una tasks yet. We're just talking about how you get basically tier 1 mats. And you can see here, you can get tier 1 mats here. Um, Basically here, you get you get the ship. This is the one that tells you to go to Shushia. And you just basically go bit by bit by bit to get more and more mats through these islands. Now, later on... Like, later on, after you get to, at the end of Tier 1, so basically, you probably get to step, let's just say, 21. I think it's 20 or 21. When you get to, like, step 20, 21, you would just want to stop at the moment, okay? You just want to stop once you get to here. Because Tier 2, you don't need to do this route until you hit Tier 2. You can do it a bit early on if you've got nothing to do with Tier 1. But overall, you want to do this area, like, a lot later on. But overall, in Tier 1, like, you use this speed run to Tier 3 as a guide. Um, I'll probably put a link of it in the comment below. Overall, just go to all the islands and just basically do the quest lines there if there's any. If there's no quest lines, just go to another island. Because they usually generally give you materials for honing for tier 1. Now, I've already gone through honing already in a previous video, but that's just one guide as well. Now, we're going to check out the post level 50 guide on max roll. And I use max roll quite a bit because max roll is incredibly, incredibly good. So, you're just going to go through the post 50 guide as well, which will tell you what you need to do, basically. So, they talk about the Vern Castle, Return Point, Chaos, and Guardian Race that we've already talked about as well. They've also talked about the Awakening skill and stuff like that as well. It's just a quick guide quest. Basically, you just go to uh, Trixie and with uh, Patrice, who teaches you it. You would have already done that already. Now, Una Tasks as well. Now, the next part with Una Tasks is what we're going to discuss here as well. But just after this little break as well, we're going to go back to here. So, another way to get mats is the T and Libra ship, as you can see here. 
and you can actually buy mats with uh, pirate coins. So you can exchange your, obviously, your coins here. Let's say, for example, exchange, you know, some of these coins here to get some pirate coins. You can upgrade your ship here. And you can also, I think I've introduced this last time with sailing. You can actually buy mats per week here as well. So you can buy 30 destruction fragments of 300, 900, and 5 patches here as well per week. This is a weekly thing. And also not to mention as well, they are tradable and you can do it per turn. So you remember those two level 50s that you uh, power passed up? You can use them to funnel ma uh, mats to your main. Okay? And this is what's going to be increasingly common where you use those little alts to farm mats to your main. The main thing is you want to get your, your two other alts to 340 eye level and then funnel it because the second chaos dungeon gives a lot of mats and you can do Lumerous as well at the same time. Also, you can use memory transfers to get up to six alts. You can even do more if you want to buy and swipe and get the character slots as well. But that's what else you can do as well. And now last but not least, as we dock in here, you can also get mats from another area. So we discussed it again, the mats from the uh, person here. Exchange Chaos Dungeon, but you can also get your mats from another area called the Saval, Saval Bloodstone Exchange. You also can get your mats from the event vendor as well, which we'll show very, very shortly. But we'll talk about the Saval Bloodstone um, uh, stones, basically. Now, those are related of being in a guild. Now, if you're not in a guild, you probably want to get into one now. Okay, very, very important guilds. Unlock a lot of things for you, okay? And depending on your guild level, it can unlock a lot of different paths for you as well. Um, so first of all, let's just get, you know, rolling. Get my unicorn and get over to the store. So with the bloodstones you get from the guild, like for example, you can go into here. Uh, I think I'm going into the guild menu, hopefully. If I'm not, well, you know, I'm going to look like a bit of a dork. So you can get basically bloodstones by contributing to the research, which you can't do into your guildmate. It takes three days to become a guildmate. Or you can donate, you know, gold and silver and you get the uh, bloodstones down here. Now with the bloodstones, what you can do is you can go into this area and there's a bloodstone vendor, which you can use to buy a certain amount of uh, guardian stone and destruction stone fragments, as well as leap stones and stuff like that, depending on the level of your guild shop. So for example, if your guild shop is like, if your guild shop's level one, you can only buy this, like these two, and that's it, okay? Like, because they only have an item level limit. If your guild shop's level one, you can buy this, okay? You can buy leap stones. And you can buy more and more as your guild shop increases. So you can buy Harmony Strength Pouches, Harmony Leap Stones, Guardian Destruction. You can also buy other things as well. You can buy Tier 2 and Tier 3 mats. You can also go to here and you can buy Entrance Tickets, which gives you a Cube Ticket. Which, you know, you can use for your weekly quests, which also give Bloodstones. And last but not least, you can use it to get uh, items that increase the chance of your honing to be successful. Like Star Breaths, Moon Breaths, and stuff like that. Which are going to tell you that you don't need it all because in tier one and tier two it's 100 percent success rate and you can get other stuff as well which is like power of the sage for tripods now to get bloodstones is you can do the research and stuff like that as well but you can also do you can also do a guild request for it, which is part of the una tasks we'll go through this later but the first time you do one of these you get bloodstones basically anyways guys that's pretty much it with uh you know how you get mats and tier one mats so you can go to the tier libra ship the guild store you can go to the event you know people as well you can do chaos dungeons and get the uh, shards to go to the vendor to exchange it for mats and you know last but not least you can go to the event vendor and the event vendor generally you have to collect certain leaves and stuff like that by doing content either on the island or just chaos dungeons and guardian raids and you can buy the honing materials here. So you can see here you can buy the honing materials. You can buy these. You can buy that. And it's generally it's a bit. It generally it's about. Or generally it's a lot. So you can get it pretty easily as well. Now I'm just going to throw these out. Because I don't need these. But last but not least. You can get more honing items. In a different sort of way. Okay. And we're going to discuss this now actually. I think we're going to discuss Una tasks now. Because I've got a bit of time as well. So Una Tasks, let's just go through it here. So this is the Una Task Daily, okay? So you've got four menus. Daily, weekly, weekly, reputation status on the daily ones, and guild requests, okay? So guild masters and officers can start tasks in the guild officer menu. And they can give you a task such as boss rush, find Gina coins, or breakthrough, or gather leaves, gather mine, metal plates, or whatever it is. And, you know, it relates to mining, logging, can it relate to sailing, can it relate to PvE content. 
can relate to fishing and a lot of other areas as well. And basically, if you do that quest once, you get extra bloodstones, which you can use to buy things. Now, daily Una quests, a lot of these will be not will be unlocked for you as you do the story missions and as you do the island missions as well. So you want to do as much of the island quest chairs as you can, because the more of them you do, the more of these you unlock. Now, the main important ones where you want to look for are the ones that give you the leap stones. So here, like where it belongs is one quest, which you get in Shushia. Prisoner Emancipation, which you get on Cowherts, you want to do that as well. And this is where you get at Hypnos a bit later on. Another quest that you can do to replace this is the one is another quest, which we'll show shortly. But you want to do these two quests for it first. Once you've done Hypno's Eyes, you want to do the Playing by the Pirates rules. This is one of the uh, best quests. Overall, another one that you want to do if you can't do that is Ride Like the Wind. Okay, Ride Like the Wind is very, very good. Now you see it's saying, you know, what about these other quests? What, you know, how should I do those? Like, you know, what do I do? Now to do those quests, okay, is basically to do those quests. The reason why you want to do those quests eventually is that you get reputation. And reputation gives you, as you can see here, it gives you rewards such as this, okay? It gives you a lot of rewards. So it gives silver at the start and it gives a lot more. Some of these give even, you know, really good rewards that you want to get. Like, for example, the two, the, uh, the two key stuff, okay? Two key is very, very important as well. Like, Tuki Island is incredibly important where it will give you a giant heart. It'll give you a stat potion. It gives you something important, like a masterpiece or something like that for later on. Like, for example, I'll show you with... Where is it? One of them does. See, this one gives you a secret map when you finish it. And also these rep infos will tell you which quests to accept. So they can get, you know, you can get the packs as well. So, for example, you get a masterpiece here. And it tells you which quest you want to complete to get the reputation reward, basically. So, it's it's very, very cruisy, obviously, with the reputation. So, you probably want to do all the Una quests to get all the rewards, basically, from the reputation. To basically max out as far as all the content. You can see here that I've done it on basically every single Una quest. Generally, on your main, like, you want to do those reputation quests on alts. You want to do the leapstone quest on your main. Because you, leapstones are one of the most restricting things that you can have in tier 1 and tier 2 that will not allow you to get to the next level, okay? Now, with every daily Una task that you do, you can get points down here, which you can get Una tokens, which you can trade in for gold at the gold shop. Now, the gold shop vendor, you can find him generally. He's called Belmont. And as you can see here, Belmont, you can see the gold shop here. You basically talk to him and hand in your Una tokens in there. And he will give you a gold token, which you can just right click and it gives you 50 gold. It depends on whether you buy the large chest, the small chest, or the bag. Now, these give you two Una points per day and exhaust at 24. So meaning that if you do more than 12 Una tasks a day on your tunes and other alts, you can't get any more max points. But there's a cheap way to get more max points, and that's the guy completing weekly quests. Now, generally with weekly quests as well, you want to go for the ones that are higher leap stones. In tier 1, you don't want to go for boss rush, okay? Because boss rush doesn't exist in tier 1. It only exists in tier 2 and tier 3. So what you should do is you should go for the proving grounds. You should do both of these PvP quests and just basically just be there for five games and just learn how to PvP. And the last one you want to do as well before you get boss rush is you can do the cube key if you want silver. But you want to do the Guardian Raid Challenge Soul, okay? Because that will give you four, you know, four leap stones. And you just have to do, I think it's six Guardian Raids in a day. And it's very, very easy. Like, basically you have to do two Soul Harvests each day. And it's just three days to do Soul Harvest. And that's that weekly done. Now, weekly quest is infinite. And it gives 12. So you can get 30. Basically, if you got one tune, you get 60 points in a day. And you get four of these Una tokens. Okay? And they can exchange those for gold. And then next day, you do the daily Una. So you got 70. And you can exchange them all win. Once you have 70 Una points, you can't get any more Una tokens for that week. They reset weekly. Now with Una tasks, the daily Una tasks, stuff like that, they're just simple little tasks that you have to do little things. As you increase in reputation over and over again, you get more, you get a different task potentially, or you just do the same task again and again. There are some, there are some Una tasks that evolve the higher reputation you get, basically. Okay, like for example, I believe the, uh, you can see here actually, I'll show you. So you can see here that you go from south to north. That was your first quest. North to south. And then basically it just flows between both directions essentially. So the quest does change. Sometimes the quest can change radically. Other times the quest, you know, it's just a slight change. Like for example, the surfer, surfing option is that the first part you do a little surf up here and here. And then you do a full course and fish above water. And essentially stuff like that as well. So just be aware as well with the surfing and stuff like that. 
or with the unit task your unit task can change from time to time basically on your reputation overall and that's pretty much it to discussing you know uno tasks and various end game content hope you guys are enjoying your you know ride in the tier one scene if you got any questions leave them in the comment below and hope you guys have a wonderful wonderful day